What's up guys, it's Brick Effect and welcome back to another episode of 99 items but a brick ain't one. Today's item is heavily inspired by a Roblox classic. Just because you guys love the Roblox classics that I made in the last video, I just thought that I had to do it again. I'll try to take some time in today's video breaking down some of the more intricate details that go behind UGC creation. For most of you guys who may not know, UGC is completely public. All you have to do is basically be verified on Roblox, have Roblox Premium 1000 or 2000, and basically start creating. Enough about the possibilities and opportunities, let's get right into today's item. First, I'll start by inserting a cylinder and sizing it to the appropriate shape or length that I want the entire horn to be. Once I pretty much have that done, I would like to establish where the horn would actually start or it protrude out of the head and where the actual horn will begin. Now we're gonna go ahead and try to model out a rough shape as to how I want the horn to curve up. Now obviously this isn't going to be a final shape, this is just going to get a good start to the overall curving shape that horns coming out of a head should be. Once I have everything pretty much curved to the shape that I'd like, I'm gonna go ahead and bring back the Roblox dummy back into the workspace, just so that way there I can kind of get everything lined up with the, the actual dimensions of a Roblox head. By the way, you can find these dummies literally by inserting a dummy into studio and exporting it out of studio. I'll probably make a video a little bit later on explaining how to do something like that, but yeah, let's continue. Now that I pretty much have everything proportionalized to the head, what I'm going to do is actually make this horn a little bit more sharper, a little bit to kind of bring out the, uh, I don't know what these horns are called. I think they're like frigid as horns i may be wrong but um how the frigid is kind of horns with the flame in the middle i don't know I'm, go I'm gonna put a picture of this somewhere um but pretty much i'm gonna go ahead and try to bring out that point to the top of the shape After I have everything pretty much merged and I have the top pointed, I'm basically going to go ahead and refine this initial um, horn shape as I kind of think it does look a little boring and it it doesn't look like what it should yet. I get fired to them kids like it's that dopamine. So much metal around my neck, can't feel it choking me. <laughs> Louis J gonna need a check by the way he broke the scene. I get paid to talk my shit, leave with potency. Flex up, big bag, big sound. Whoa, 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 so much. All right, so now that I kind of have a little bit of an initial shape, what I'm going to do is actually remove some of the edges along the side, as I think that this will also give that um, frigidus horn expression that I'm looking for.
Next is basically trying to connect the horn to the head. So this is a little bit confusing because I kind of wanted to kind of almost look like as if it was like um, like lodged into the head more so than it was actually like grown out of the head. Um, just because like, you know, the Roblox head is a little like funny, especially when you're dealing with something so sharp and edgy as um, the Frigidus horn. Okay, that looks amazing. What I'm gonna do now is basically something that I think a lot of you guys um, probably have seen some of my broken um, items in the past and probably are wondering exactly how do I achieve that without um, you know, going over the poly limit. So I hope this kind of does help out. I select a specific edge and then I take some of the points and actually offset them from the initial points. And then I bevel that new zigzag edge and delete the faces in between. So that way there, it pretty much gives me the appearance or the look that um, a piece of the horn has been broken off or has been, you know, um, dislodged. All right, so this is something that I wanted to do. So I wanted to replace um, not only just the actual initial horn with my own taste, um, but I actually also wanted to replace the flame in the middle of the horns. Um, and basically On Purpose, which is a brand that I actually um, you know, talk a lot about on this channel. Um, but On Purpose um, kind of goes by this like slogan, which is um, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, and basically I kind of like, you know, used to like add halos and horns to a lot of different things in order to kind of like express that good, bad and ugly. Um, I was actually able to, um, re um, I actually came up, I was able to come up with the idea of replacing the flame with a halo. By the way, this is not my first time making an item like this. And I genuinely do believe you're tuning in, especially if you're just getting into UGC. Um, don't be afraid to recreate some of the items that you've made in your past because there's so many new cool tricks and techniques that you've learned since that like really would take that item to the next level especially if people already enjoy the item as well like it doesn't hurt to just give them an update a version 2 version 3 version 4 you know it's been a year or been a few months you know? definitely don't be afraid of that expression <laughs> 
All right, so now that I kind of have the um, the um, halo kind of uh, situated, um, what I wanted to do is also add another um, like accessory piece as well, something to kind of make it stand out, make it be its own thing. Um, and that's basically adding chains. Now, I didn't want to add chains in like a, a ironic way or like a very like bland way. So what I actually did was actually made it so that way there, some of the chains are actually lodged into the horn just to kind of add a little bit more effect to the overall item. In order to accomplish this, basically what I do is I insert a um, cube and I shape it into the most blandest, boring chain um, shape that I possibly can make. Um, and then I, you know, you know basically I use the array modifier in order to do this. I'm pretty sure you can see the thing how I'm doing this. I, I, I don't think I need to like over explain it. <laughs> basically go around the horn section of this model and pretty much um, clean up the edges that actually um, are located inside the broking area. So pretty much what I do is I use E to extrude and then I merge everything to the center and kind of push it into the actual model. All right, so lastly, what we're going to be doing is UV mapping. Um, personally, this is my favorite part. I I don't think this is actually my favorite part. Genuinely, what I mean, when I say things are my favorite part, I really just mean that they really, really give me a run for my money. And that's not a bad thing. You know, I think the modeling portion for me personally, because I've been building on Roblox for so long, um, that is the fun part. That is the my favorite part, per se. But my favorite part, meaning like, yo, I, you know, just that idea. I thought like I highlight that because I know I say like, this is my favorite part, and this is my favorite part. But for each item, I do have like a different favorite part. I didn't really like the, um, the, the actual texturing portion of this, but you'll find out later as to why. All right, so now that we have everything UV, ma um, UV mapped, um, what we're going to do is take um, our UV mapped item and transfer it over to Substance Painter. Now that we're here, basically what we're going to do is start off with what we all pretty much be familiar with. We basically are going to bake the item, make sure that we get all of those light rays hitting the thing that we want to in the way that we want to because we cannot... Um, create those technical reflections and things like that on the final product. I don't know if you guys have noticed, I figured out a little thing with like metal um, as far as texturing and I've been acting like a madman with it. I don't know why, I've just been so addicted to putting metal onto things just because of the it's very hard um for any of you guys that are actually just getting into ugc um ugc i know like you guys probably know exactly what i'm talking about making items that really have that like definition that we we all would love them to have really does take time and i think you know being able to add metal to things is something that reminds me that um, anyone can overcome any kind of fear towards any skill. Tell them not to die. Tell them get up out the way. And 
there you have it, the revision to my broken angelic horns, the broken underworld horns. Be sure to check out these items in the Brick Effect Essential um, group as they are currently on sale for 65 Robux. Listen, the market like fluctuates and does a bunch of cool fancy things. I literally can't control it. So in other terms, um, if you do catch it and it isn't what I'm saying it is in this video, don't like come like keyboard warrior in here. But anyways, guys, it's Brick Effect. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and also subscribe if you guys want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you guys next time. All right, so I know for a lot of you guys, if you guys have been following or subscribing to this YouTube channel, you guys already know what this part of the video is. It is definitely time for me to give a code a specific code, a code that looks like this code right here that's coming up on my screen. Be sure to use this code in the game linked below to get a pair of these horns for completely free. And actually, I personally like these a lot and I thought that you guys would like these. Um, and I know I normally kind of give away like throwaway um, textures. I decided that you guys gave me so much um, you know, support with the delays and everything the last video. I just felt as though that I just kind of wanted to thank you guys for that. And in order to do that, I'm giving you guys something golden for your golden support. Anyways, guys, I'm Brick Effect, and I'll see you guys next time.